Hello again to my newest screencast where I'll be telling, where I'll be showing you how you can really use uh, LUIS, so language understanding intelligence service, to extract entities out of the conversation the Power Virtual Agent is doing with users. So recently, I was uh, inspired to do that. I mean, to actually test this scenario because I found this small blog post written by Jeff Tsang. Jeff, I hope I spelled your last name properly. Um, and he wrote about smart entity extraction using Pivotal Agent and the entities uh, functionality. So the entities functionality is basically the way that Pivotal Agent is able to get the keywords out of the sentence written by the user. So assuming, for example, you have this colors entity. Now in colors entity, uh, you have the input that the user can type in or any of the inputs that user just can write an answer to the bot's question in the internet or natural language like with a full sentence but then bot is going to extract the keyword and then match it to the entity the same uh, when speaking about the age for example i can type my age using words using numbers but i'm not actually required to write exactly the number so if bot asks me hey what is your age i'm not required to type 20 or 40. i can write the answer like hey i'm 40 years old and then bot is i mean has to have tools to actually recognize what my age is not to ask me the same question over and over again as long as i'm not answering just using numbers because in that way in that approach, that would be highly frustrating for the users. So I have created like three examples of topics uh, that I'll just be switching off and on. So all of them are about my help desk scenario so that I have this help desk bot written for the customer that is being used internally. Right, so in this first scenario, bot is first asking user, hey, can you describe your issue? And then the second question is, what kind of an issue is that? So in this scenario, once I say uh, help desk, sorry, please help. Oh, first thing is that I will have to authenticate. Right. I mean, now check out this new approach for copying this uh, confirmation code. It is quite I mean, it's changed a little bit, so I can just hit the button copy. It's more comfortable. Uh, I have problem with my phone's battery. So, right now, I have typed in the issue, and now I have to switch, choose between one of the uh, one of the issues one of the kinds of, of of the issue and i can't type my whole sentence like my issue is related to software or hardware or maybe user doesn't know actually what what is their issue related to um so i could now either uh hit one of the buttons or just type in the message by myself what i can do as well i can use the options here in the question and then in options for the user you might see that I can as well define synonyms here. So that if I define synonyms and then user uh, would not respond with just software or for example, application or not hardware, but battery in this case, the bot would still be able to recognize that this is a hardware issue, but I'm still not able to do it within a single question and answer. And still I'm not able to answer with my full sentence. So now let's get back to topics. So now what I'm going to do is to switch off this one and instead turn off the second one where I have actually used the entity I have created. So a part of the entities that you have here defined that you can use obviously in your conversation, you can as well create your custom entity. Now to create your custom entity, you have to just enter the names 
and their synonyms. So that's kind of the thing I showed you uh, in that in that example before, so that you can define the keywords and then synonyms to them. Uh, but this is a little bit more intelligent because it also has this feature for smart matching. So it doesn't really require the user to simply answer with a single word, but you can as well answer with a whole sentence. So now when I go back to topics, uh, it is opened here. So you'll be not, you can notice that this question here um, where Bob is asking user what kind of a, in, an issue you have is a type of the entity uh, IT help desk, right? But the same way I could be using any other of the existing entities if the question was about something else like age or the color. But in this case, I'm asking about, about um, the kind of an issue. So in this case, I would be able to actually answer with a sentence. Check this out. First, I need to log in, obviously. <clears throat> I think there is kind of a deployment going on. It's really working slow. Right. So because battery is uh, is a synonym of the hardware uh, in the ADD I, I created. Therefore, if I answer again, my laptop's battery is dead, you'll notice that the flow will jump into the hardware branch. Oh, it didn't actually. So uh, issues with battery maybe. Uh, hmm. Right. So that is not actually working very well because now it went to the all other conditions. So it did not cover this, but I just tried once again. So yes, let's let's try to start over again. Let's try it this way. So I can't save Excel file. Maybe I, I maybe I didn't use. So like once again, now you should go into the software branch. Yeah, right. So it went to software branch because Excel was actually used as a synonym of software. <clears throat> so um, let's start it like over again. And I'll just show you one thing. So the key point here is that I actually don't want to first answer the question about what my issue is and then as well be the one who decides whether it's software or hardware or maybe something else, right? So me as a, as a participant of this conversation, when the bot is asking me, what is your issue? I'm expecting that right after I type in what the issue is, the bot is really taking it over. So it says, okay, so your, so your issue is software kind, uh, the application is this and that, and then maybe I'll just contact you with a human agent because I don't know how to do it, how to solve it. Or maybe I'll just look up our Q&A database to do, find an answer for you. So once again, let's check this, this uh, another approach. So yeah, I need to log in because I've rested the session. So let's imagine a more difficult answer. So I have locked my laptop.
So that's a very, very long description from the user. And then I want that the bot is already aware of what my issue is. So let's try it again. <coughs> And in this scenario, it's somehow thought that this question is actually a software, which is called, no, which is wrong. It should be hardware. So anyway, it went into hardware because laptop, maybe because laptop. So it kind of worked, but you know that my issue is more software, right? Anyway, because of all these um, issues and reasons that I just showed you, I decided to just simply go a little bit more beyond. So I looked onto the Louis. So when you go to the Louis.ai, you'll have to log in. First thing to remember is that you have to have either the administrative account to create your Louis service, or you have to have uh, administrator's consent to do so. Anyway, once you log in, you'll be then asked to create a new resource in, in Azure uh, that is called language. Uh, it's called Cognitive Services. And in under the Cognitive Services, uh, you have to create the new one. That will be called language understanding because uh, Louis is being migrated free really to use only Azure services so that when I mean if you do have your old Louis installation uh, you'll be asked soon to migrate to Azure uh, if you are the first timer with Louis then you'll obviously be requested to create your Azure services so for the for the purpose of the Louis you have to create a service for both authoring and runtime uh, that's really good to have both the runtime and authoring in the same location. So be sure to, to choose the same one. And then once you create it, oh, one thing more, you can as well use the tier that is free. So let's say this one. So you can use the F0 tier. So it is free, it's free of use, so you can, you can really test a lot just using this tier, uh, this fit here. And then once you're done, you have to go back to Louise and into my apps. And then once you select the subscription that you've chosen to create the service and actually the service, you will be able to create your own first application. I have done my homework already. So in the designing of the, I mean, in the, in the building designing of the application, first thing you have to create is an intent. So the intent is like a group of, of the sentences of information that the user can type in that are uh, categorized by the names so that once you provide a new sentence from the user, Luis is going to be able to um, intelligently uh, match the user input with one of the existing intents already. So even with only using intents, I should be already able to actually have my sentence recognized by either a software or hardware. But what I did is that I just created one user intent that is just a set of example sentences, right? And you can see that these sentences have already keywords replaced by the entities. So then the second thing I did was I've created two entities. First one was a software, second one was a hardware. The entity type I've chosen was a list. So that's kind of the thing you can, you can do in, in, PW, uh, in Power Virtual Agent. So you create uh, an entity, you create a word, and then you create its synonyms. But because of the smart matching and the AI that is underneath, uh, Lois is able to uh, still match the correct entity for the new word as well. But you would be able as well to use any other kind of entity like the regular expression or maybe the composite. 
the idea I had behind was that when the user types in the sentence, Luis is going to find out all the entities that are in that sentence and will take them out. And then based on the number of hits, so like the, the more hits to the uh, software entity this sentence has, the more software related uh, the, the, the context is. However, what you could also do is that once you create all these values here, you will be able to decompose user's input from, hey, I have a problem with my, soft, with my Excel file, I can't save it, to, for example, recognize what is the file, uh, what, what is the application, what is the problem, what was the action, uh, what is the, the kind, so software hardware, right? So uh, having all these entities extracted from the sentence, the bot would be really able to ad hoc create a ticket in a, in a help desk, filling, uh, filling in all the required information about the system, about the user, about the kind of an issue, about uh, the, the actions that were done to, to repeat the issue, and so on and so on. So it's really, really powerful. Okay, so like um, once you're done with creation of entities, the next thing you have to do is to go back to indents and then match keywords in indents with your entities. So as you can see here already, there were keywords in my in my examples that has already been matched. So like for example, can I ask you to reset it for me? That was matched with the intent software. Uh, with an issue that was called uh, a personal. But I, if I type in a new example utterance, so for example, uh, I don't know. Right, so that's my new utterance. Now, once I hit enter, it will be added to the list and already the keywords that are matching the existing intents, uh, entities are replaced. Now, if you would like to match any other keyword from here, you can simply have to just surround it one or more. And then select uh, the, the entity list that you want to, to use as, a, as an input and as well the value that you want to use. Uh, so once you're done with that, uh, you then have to go and train your, your Luis. I've trained already. And then you can as well test. So for example, here is the, uh, the sentence that the user typed in so that I have this problem with the password. So let me test it. So it has a 100% match with the user issues, that's fine. But let's see what intents it had inside. So locked is an intent of software, forgot, software, password, reset, password as well. So the primary intent, the primary entity that was uh, used in the sentence is software. And then based on that, the flow should really say, this is a software. So the second thing that you have to do, uh, let me just jump to the to the third, sorry, to the third topic. So now I'll just turn off this one and turn on the last one. Right, is to create a different action. So. In this approach, in this last scenario, my Power Virtual agent is only going to ask the user one question. What is your issue? And then once the user types in the description, uh, Power Virtual agent will send it to Power Automate, and then Power Automate is going to return whether it's software or hardware. How it was done? Very easily. So as well as again, as, as in all the previous examples, you have to create your new uh, Power Automate flow. But this time, there is a new action on the market, let's say. So you have to use it. 
so to make it really really consistent with the Microsoft approach so now when you want to create a new Power Automate you have to use a trigger that is called when a new message from Power Automate is received or something like that so um, let, me, let me check it for you uh, just a test uh, V2L. Uh, right, V2L. No. Power. No. no. Okay, let's skip it. So there is a new trigger that is called when Power Virtual Agents call a flow. And that's today a really proper and the most required and the most recommended approach how to trigger your flow that is going to be used by, by the Power Virtual Agent. So in my scenario, I have created this Power, Power Automate already that is simply being called by the Virtual Agent. And the Power Virtual Agent is passing one value, that is the user issue. And then the flow is calling my uh, Louise service using the post approach. How to do that, you can read uh, in the related blog post. Uh, link is just below. So it is sending the query, the user, the, the user, 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 user issue as a, as a body. And then based on the number of uh, the software or hardware uh, entities, so number of occurrences of one, of one and other entity uh, it is trying to define whether this is an issue software, uh, issue related to software or issue related to hardware. Sorry, I'm just getting somehow lost. But anyway, this is just a very simple approach. So based on the number of occurrences of each entity in the response, uh, the flow is just calculating what is the outcome, software or hardware. However, it could be a really, really much more advanced. So because it is able to get back all the entities that are extracted from the sentence, it could actually respond to the virtual agent, not only with the decision, software, hardware, but also with all the metadata, all the keywords it was able to extract. This, uh, this, this example, however, is, is quite an easy one. So it's just returning the, the issue type and the description. And then based on the outcome from that Power Automate, Virtual Agent is uh, now able to define whether this is a software or hardware. So let's try it once again. Help desk, I need help. Right. Okay. <clears throat> I'll just copy this, this sentence so that you'll see that it's really working fine. All right, so now bot asked me, hey, can you describe your issue and then be as much descriptive as possible? So I'll just type in this whole sentence. Now you'll see that video agent will just jump to the flow it will trigger my Power Automate, passing on the description. And immediately, it got information. Okay, so you've locked your computer, you have not remembered the password, blah, blah, blah. So that's possibly the software issue. And then it looked the Q&A database. Uh, it found an answer that is absolutely not answering the issue I had, but maybe the Q&A database is just not smart enough. Anyway, uh, it went properly in the, in the flow, in the conversational flow. So this, um, the, the usage, the involvement of, of Luis actually helped me to solve one of the issues I had. So it helped me to make this conversation with the user more seamless, more efficient and more comfortable and less frustrating for the user because user is just once to ask the question and then virtual agent is really intelligent together with Louis enough to recognize and tell whether the issue is software or hardware related. So that is really fine for me as a starting point 
is really good. Now I can really move it forward and develop to, to get more keywords to integrate with a help desk ticket, ticketing system and so on and so on. Scenarios are just unlimited. I hope you liked it and I hope that it will as well help you in your journey with Forbital Agents and Louise as well and Power Automate obviously because Louise is, uh, is a service that you can really integrate with any, any Power Platform tool. So um, yeah, feel free to ask me questions if you do have any. Um, follow me on my Twitter, follow me on my blog and until the next time, thank you very much. Bye.